have bronchitis at the moment, so if I have a little coughing fit, I'm so sorry. Um, just want to say thank you so much for inviting me here to speak today on a personal level and also on behalf of TFMR, which is Terminations for Medical Reasons Ireland. Um, I'll just briefly explain to you my own personal story and what happened to me and my family and how the Eighth Amendment played such a horrible role in a very sad time in our lives. Um, going back six years ago, I, myself and my husband, we were due our third baby. We had two boys, Keen and Evan. They were eight and five at the time and we were really excited to be expecting our third baby hoping for a girl, <laughs> but just so excited. Um, it was on New Year's Eve that we found out, and of course with the excitement of it being New Year's Eve, we, we ended up telling the boys, which was obviously a mistake. As Peter pointed out, people usually wait a, a bit longer, but so the boys, we they found, they knew that I was pregnant, and we were just so looking forward to having a third baby. Um, my two sisters were actually both pregnant as well, and so the three of us were all going to be due the same week, um, which is kind of bittersweet, but I have a beautiful little niece and nephew now who will be six in, the both of them will be six in August. Um, so I was going for my 12 week scan and my husband didn't come with me because as most of women here know that have had babies, the 12 week scan is, is it's quite boring and you know, it's more or less just to say that you are pregnant and everything is okay. So I went by myself. And my first two pregnancies had gone pretty easy and everything was, was pretty perfect with the two of them. Um, so the last thing I was thinking was that there was it, going to be anything wrong with this pregnancy. Um, within a few minutes of the midwife scanning me, she immediately turned around and asked, where was my husband? And I kind of knew straight away, as I've said before, it was like being in a film, you know, where you get your husband here you now, there's, there's something wrong. And I, I remember saying, no, I'm fine, I'm strong, tell me, just tell me. And she said, no, she said, you need to get your husband and you will be then seen by the specialist, the obstetrician. So I rang Alan, my husband, and he came down. And within an hour, we went back into the obstetrician to get scanned on a bigger machine to see exactly what was going on. Um, again, within a few minutes, the, the, there was a specialist midwife in there who, who, who was just amazing, like my angel still to this day. Um, instantly, again, the, the obstetrician turned around and said that unfortunately, the, the sky is what we called it, that she had no chance of surviving. Um, she basically had a really, really large cystic hygroma on the side of her head, which is like fluid, it's like a growth. Um, usually at this stage of pregnancy, it's, you, you measure it and a two is okay, and what Sky had was over eight. And usually this is an indicator of a fatal abnormality. Um, I remember thinking, that, you know, we could go to America, we can set up a fun pay, you know, we we'll, we'll, we'll get it sorted. And the obstetrician, in fairness, she just kept on, you know, apologising and saying, you know, sorry, the, this baby is definitely not going to survive. Um, it was just, it, it was the worst news ever. And I, I just thought, I just, myself and Alan, my husband, we were thinking, well, what could we do to help her, to save her? You know, she was so planned and so wanted and so loved and still so, so part of our family. Um, so basically the obstetrician had said that it's likely that she'd have a fatal condition, um, a chromosomal fatal condition. And I needed to know for sure um, that it wasn't something that she, you know, that it would be special needs or if it was Down syndrome we would have proceeded with the pregnancy or, you know, anything like that. So I, I needed to know and I needed proof that, you know, that she had no chance of, of living. So I got the a CVS, which Dr. Boylan has spoken about, which is an extremely invasive procedure um, at 12 weeks where they, they take some of the placenta and they basically send it to London um, and they tested for the chromosome abnormalities. So we knew without a shadow of a doubt that, that Sky wasn't compatible with life. She had a condition called trisomy 13, 
um, which is Patel's um, syndrome. But not only that, when we were being scanned, the obstetrician could see a lot more wrong with her. You know, her heart hadn't developed properly, her, her lungs, her kidneys. She was so broken. She was so broken. And under probably other circumstances, I probably would have spontaneously had miscarried. But for whatever reason, her little heart kept going. And I, I remember asking the, the obstetrician, well, what happens now? What do we do now? And she said, she said, the baby would probably have a heart attack between now and 20 weeks. And it that was like being in a horror film. I, I just, I, I, I was carrying this baby and to be told that she may have a heart attack was just, it was just horrific. Um, so I assumed naively that, you know, we'd be brought in for a DNC or an early induction. Um, I was 13 weeks by this stage. And we were told that no, that there was nothing that we could that could be done for us. Um, we were told that we could continue with the pregnancy, and I possibly she could possibly have the heart attack within the next few weeks, or I could go full term, and then she would die. Either she would be born having died, or she would die straight away after. Um, but because she had so many issues, it was probably unlikely she'd make it to the 40 weeks. Still so naive. Um, thinking what were we going to do and then the obstetrician mentioned that we could travel to the UK for a termination and to say I was blown away here I was 34 happily married planned baby and I was going to have an abortion and you know a lot of people have said to me you know abortion is not for me but I'm okay for other people to have an abortion you know I, I probably would have been the same but I, need, I had to have an abortion. I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd have to have one until I did. And the only decision that we thought was best for Skye and best for our two boys and for our family was to travel over to the UK and to end the pregnancy. I wasn't going to allow her to suffer. Um, not even for a minute. I wasn't prepared to just, you know, maybe so I could see her for a few minutes and Again, as Peter said, couples continue with their pregnancies and at TFMOR we fully support their decisions to, to continue with the pregnancies and, you know, they get the help and all the support that they need here in Ireland. But unfortunately, if you choose to, to end the pregnancy, you are expelled from your country. So we made all the logistic planning to travel over to Liverpool Women's Hospital, which was when you're going through such grief of your very wanted baby not going to live and then add this extra layer, it's like an onion, layer after layer of just devastation. Um, you know, how do we get to Liverpool? Where do we stay? Where do we go? It was 3,000 euro. What would we do with the boys? All of this compounded whilst you're, you're trying to go through, you know, grief of losing, that your baby was going to die. Um, thankfully, I have the most supportive and wonderful family, and my husband and my mom and dad. And um, you know, we're a large family. And we're a family of five. There's 21 grandchildren. My mom and dad fostered a huge amount of children. I have a great family support network, and my mom and dad decided that they'd travel with myself and my husband Alan over to Liverpool. And I remember thinking, I, I don't want to go on an airplane. Um, I didn't want, I was so upset that I wanted somewhere to cry and somewhere to grieve and somewhere to go through the pain of it all in privacy. And my dad, he drove and I, f I felt so sorry for him. He's 72 now, he's 68 at the time. And you know what the dad's like, they're, they're just so lovely. And he, 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 was, he was so sad for me and I was so sad for him being so sad for me. And it was just so wrong in every way. And he said, it, you know, your baby could have Down syndrome, but it's nothing fatal. And I said, that's fine, continue on with the pregnancy, you know, no problem, that's fine, we'll deal with it. And my little daughter Freya was born in July 2013, and she was born with a cleft palate, a hole in her heart, hip dysplasia, she has a little chromosome abnormality, and um, she's perfect. She started school in September, she's the boss of our house. Um, she's crazy and you know I've had anti-choice people tell me that she's my punishment that I got this child with special needs who
to say that she was my punishment, um, you know, I always say that oh, God did a shit job because she's perfect. Um, so I just want to reiterate, this isn't about disabilities. I think Irish people, I think we are good, we were, we're good people and we love children and I, I consider us all pro-life. Um, yeah, so basically we exhausted every avenue between sending in bills into the government. You know, Amanda Mellet did the UN case and nothing unfortunately will make having to have a termination in Ireland for a fatal abnormality legal unless we repeal the 8th. It's absolutely the only option um, is to repeal the 8th Amendment and my story is all everybody's story because unfortunately it could happen to anybody um, and I hope that you do when you're out there talking to people and you're out canvassing that you do tell my story and you do tell about Sky um, and hopefully it will help change the minds of